all your school rugby all in one place. This is Next Gen 50. guys welcome to next gen 15 and in today's video we are going to be doing a squad analysis on the baby box before the 2022 summer series so if you are new to the channel please don't forget to click that subscribe button as well as bell notification and as soon as new videos are released you'll be the first to know but first up um, obviously earlier this year I did a prediction video on what I thought the baby box squad would look like total score 16 out of 30 which is just about a passing grade which precisely shows exactly why I'm not a selector and just a YouTuber basically but anyway let's get into the squad okay so let's get started off with the outside backs first and the first player we're going to be taking a look at is Donovan Don now Donovan um, might not be a household name necessarily to a lot of you guys but you must remember very badly affected by the pandemic guys um, I didn't get to see much of him, but I'll tell you what, this guy's very explosive and has got a very deadly step. Definitely an unknown quantity. Um, last time I, there was a player that was sort of an unknown quantity and I was sort of questioned the selection was Cohen Jasper that completely proved me wrong. So, um, although I haven't seen a lot of him, um, the little that I did see of him, I thought he was definitely a decent player. Um, let's see how he gets on in the tournament. Then we go on to Katleko Letabele, Old Kez Boy, another guy. Well, look, all of these guys were affected by the pandemic, let's face it. But, uh, yeah, he was selected for the SA Schools Tour to, well, SA Under 18 Tour to Georgia. Um, definitely looks like a quite an outstanding talent, had a very decent under 20 competition. Um, so definitely will be keen to prove himself there. will gain valuable experience as far as I know he's under 19. So definitely will have another year there as well. Moving on, we look at Duron Kuvort. Now, I'm personally very delighted for Duron because he's a very humble young player, works very hard. Um, I think the Varsity Cup made him come on in absolute spades, showed more than just his stepping game. I mean, he's always been a very good uh, stepper, very good with his footwork, a lot of pace. Um, but I think another dimension that has added to his game was his kicking. I think his kicking game has improved a hell of a lot. Um, and could very likely be a starter at the fullback position uh, for the SA Schools team. But let's see, let's see what uh, Coach Bafana comes comes with um, in terms of uh, his strategy and all the rest of that. Moving on, we go to none other than Kanan Moody, definitely one of the most exciting prospects on this list, guys. Um, a, a play with URC experience. Um, he was definitely an outstanding talent at Bora and Lampo. Uh, was he one of the top in his position? He was definitely up there, but I, I don't think anybody would have thought that his uh, development would have, would have sort of accelerated this fast. He's already got URC experience. Um, he's just a try scoring machine and, uh, you know, like just mature beyond his years. A player that's going places. He's definitely going to be one of the players to watch at the tournament. Mark my words on that. Okay, so that's your outside backs. Then we're going to be moving on to the centers. Um, first up in the centers, we got Colton Bunnies. Um, Colton, very talented player from school level. Um, definitely more of a fly off when he was at Gasfontein. Um, but I think he adds another dimension to uh, the center position. I, I really like him as an inside center. His handling, his distribution is fantastic. Kicking is fantastic. Obviously, the experience at fly off makes him well equipped. Um, sort of at that inside center position um, and obviously um, provides depth, a lot of depth at the fly-off position as well. Very exciting young talent over here. Uh, moving on, then we got, uh, I mean, guys, what a season Suleiman Hartzenberg had last year for Bishops. Uh, arguably the best player in the country last year. I don't think many will be arguing about that. Um, I don't think anybody predicted Bishops putting on some of the scores they did last year. Uh, fantastic season for him and the boys. Under 19 only, already got Varsity Cup experience. Um, definitely going to be an exciting player to watch at this year's tournament. Um, moving on, we've got another outstanding talent. I mean, this team is absolutely stacked full of talent, but this guy's up there with the best of them, and that's Ethan James. He's part of the squad last year, uh, played as a winger, 
I really was impressed by him. He was playing in very difficult conditions, um, but still, you could hold, his, you know, hold his head up high with um, with some of the displays that he had. Um, it was just such a pity we never got to see him uh, have a full season in his matric year, especially with that pauldron backline. I mean, they were absolutely stacked. It would have been very exciting to see them um, play that year. So that is your three centers and moving on to the Flahovs, more exciting talent here. We start off with none other than Sasha Ngomozulu. Um, just be named SA under 20 captain. What an outstanding year it's been for him. It's been a dream year for Sasha. I mean, you know, he's made his, um, you know, he's already got Curry Cup experience. He's already got URC experience, baby bar captain. Um, you know, I've always said from the beginning, you know, I've sp spoken about this youngster ad nauseum about how much talent he's got, but he's now combined that with a bit more maturity. Um, the leadership role is something that I think he's definitely going to grow into and definitely excited to see how he comes about. And then he's understudy likely this year. Um, another very exciting prospect, guys, Kompion von Ludwig. You can, you can ever forget some of his performances last year in the little rugby that he did get to play. Um, didn't feature that much for the Bulls under 20 this year. I'm not sure if it was uh, injury or tactics. I'm, I'm, you know, it's it's not like the under 20 competitions covered very well. We do our best, but there's limited information out there. But Compion is definitely somebody that's up there in terms of uh, the talent pool. Um, I, I really did think it was going to be a coin toss between him and John Smith, but ultimately uh, Bufano went with Compion. Now Compion can obviously play as a centre as well, which means that there's a bit of depth added there. So, you know, in the sort of... Um, Sasha's also played a bit of centre. So, I mean, between him, Bunnies and uh, Sasha, you've got a very dynamic, um, you know, uh, first receiver combination there and second receiver combination there in a sense. So quite exciting to see. So that's your flowers. Moving on to your scrum halves. And uh, first up, obviously, Nico Stain. Nico is always going to be there, part of the reckoning last year. Uh, scored a try on his debut, I believe. Um, just an outstanding player. Still hardworking, still humble. Hasn't changed much from school. Obviously, grown a bit, um, as these youngsters do, you know, and then they're sort of in that phase. Um, but yeah, very highly rated at the Lions, definitely uh, part of that scrum off pipeline over there. And I know the coaches, they rate him very, very highly. Um, so yeah, he's definitely going to be one of the, the he's, I think he's going to perform part of the spine of this group, so to speak. Um, then Neil LaRue, um, outstanding talent, guys. I mean, you know, a lot of people have said he's one of the best schoolboy scrum offs they've seen in a generation. Um, he, he just controls the game so well. Very, very intelligent player. Going to the Bulls, I think, is definitely going to suit him for, uh, you know, for his sort of style of play for the future. Um, but yeah, very exciting talent. Old, Oakdale, old boy, um, just had a couple of games last year, but in those games, he was absolutely dynamic, absolute dynamite. So um, under 19 as well. So definitely be part of uh, probably a starter next year. But uh, this year, I think definitely there for the experience. Um, but watch when he comes on the field. He's definitely going to make it some, uh, like a massive difference in some games. They're talking of massive talents, uh, Imad Khan. Uh, Imad's always been a highly rated scrum off. Um, you know, a, a bishop's boy. Um, I think there's, there's nobody that will disagree that, uh, that he's always had the talent. But he's just come on in leaps and bounds as well. Last year was absolute dynamite for him. Definitely one of the best scrum offs in the country. Uh, currently playing at Western Province at youth level, um, had some outstanding performances for the UCT Arkies in the Varsity Cup. I think it says a heck of a lot, um, you know, You know when you, coaches give these guys chances even though they're out of school. You take a look at Suleiman and Imad, only 19 year, about under 19 this year, and they've played some fantastic rugby in the Varsity Cup against some guys that are four or five years older than them. So the thing is, you take a look at the European clubs, they trust their players very early, give them their debuts very early, and they don't disappoint. And I just think with the talent that exists in South Africa, you got to give these guys a chance. You I mean, you give them half a chance, they're young, they're hungry, and uh, they all go in places. And you just got to think a couple of years ago, we were so worried about our scrum off stock and take a look at these three now then also take a look what's coming through at school level there's really some outstanding talent coming through so that is your scrum offs then we're obviously going to be moving on to the loose forwards so the first um set of loose forwards we started off with uh, ruan fenter um 
he was named as one of our under 20s to watch this year globally guys um there were three or four south africans in that team if i remember but ruan was definitely one of them um you know the fact that he's like only under 20 and you know he's put in some absolute barnstorming performances at urc level i mean he's taking on guys 10 years older than him on the physical game i think he's going to be very very important to south africa's chances um because you know when they face the english and the irish especially they're going to be facing a very physical pack uh set of packs and you also take a look at um uh, the, the French, I mean, you know, you've got Ntumak, an eighth man over there that's, you know, not going to stand back for anyone. So Ruan's going to be very important to that. Um, then moving on to Cameron Hanukom, uh, Paul Boy's old boy. I mean, the fact that he's a starter at the Bulls at eighth man when they've got so much talent in that position just shows you Cameron's pedigree. Um, he was an outstanding prospect at Paul Boy's. Uh, another one that didn't never got a full season. Hard. I think he played only was able to play that one game against Monument. Um, but absolutely outstanding young talent, uh, great character, definitely someone that can go all the way in the game. Um, so let's see how he gets on this year. Then uh, just to show how much depth truly exists, we move on to Sia and Giza. Now Sia to me was one of the best players, under 20 players, not only in South Africa last year, but on the planet. He started off very slowly, granted, but I think that was, you know, just remember, this guy was just out of school, didn't have a season because of the coof, and, uh, you know, he needed to grow into the role, and every game he just seemed to get better and better. I can't explain how highly I rate this guy. Um, so much talent and going to go places, and one of only a few shocks to make the squad as well. Um, then our second set um, that we move on to, um, first up, Bruno Mtleche, um, young talent, um, under 19 I believe as well, um, could play number 7 and number 8 as far as I can recall, another guy you just didn't see enough of at school level because obviously because of the situation guys, but very highly rated amongst the rugby community i mean i think the sharks are really kicking themselves they lost someone of the stature you know you went to school in the area um definitely going to be i don't know if he'll be a starter necessarily um but he's definitely going to be there for the experience because i mean he's one of the first names on the team sheet for next year right he's just one of those talents that are going to go there for the experience um you know learn from his fellow players and all the rest of it but you never know one look look at sia last year you know you got given a, you got given a chance performed okay but then got given another chance and there was basically a starter so the same thing could happen with Kutrino. you just don't know um then we have uh paul de villiers from oakdale um another under 19 player part of that oakdale dream team last year um, I'm told by a well-known strength and conditioning coach that this guy is one of the most athletic individuals you li are likely to come across. Apparently, stats and numbers are just something crazy. And the work rate is something I just recall of him when he was um, at school level. I mean, this guy's just got an absolute engine on him. Doesn't stop working, doesn't stop getting around the field. A lot of competition in the loose forward department. But believe me, if this guy gets given half a chance, I mean, you know, the other teams better worry because this guy does not stop and is very, very physical. And talking about physical specimens, um, the, to some people this might be a bit of a surprise because, um, you know, he wasn't part of the record in last year, um, but low no, now, um, those, those that know, know about this kid, okay? The, him and Basson were going to be, well, we're going to form one of the most potent uh, loose four trios in the country in their matric year, and they both complemented each other so well. And low is a physical terrier as well. I mean, this guy just, he, he puts his body on the line at any given moment. I've rated him highly since school. I think that he could be a starter. Um, but even as an impact player, this guy just is all over the place. And he's definitely going to be needed in those uh, physical confrontations because that's where the opposition are going to tackle the South Africans. They're going to tackle them up front. They're going to try and dominate them um, in the forward play because that's how you nullify the South African threat. But like, you know, these uh, these type of players like Lo Null, they don't stand back for anyone. So just, just get ready for some explosions. It's going to be interesting. Then we're going to be moving on to the lock position and uh, first up we have somebody that another player that uh, made our under 20 players to watch 
for 2022. That's Ronald Ludwig. Um, another player, extremely talented at school level. I, I did manage to see a lot of him because he did play first team in his grade 11 year. So there, I, I did. Well, I was able to see a lot of him, and that's why I'm very confident about rating him. And I, I'm very confident about rating him as one of the best young under 20 players, not only in South Africa but in the world. Honestly, um, massive talent. He's been uh, utilized by the Bulls. He's got Bulls. He's, I think he's got URC experience, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, he's definitely going to be up there in terms of the physical confrontations as well. Next up, Cornet Roll, another Oakdale boy, um, and one of the only a few shocks. I think it's only him and Sia that's out of the shocks in this team, which just shows you how, you know, basically it shows you the shock season, but it also shows you that, uh, you know, even in teams that uh, haven't performed up to expectations, individuals can shine. Corne is a giant. I mean, this is one of the best line-out jumpers in his age group, um, and uh, he, he's absolutely dominant in the line-out. And his his IQ and his reading of the game is up there with the best of them as well. Real specimen, um, someone to keep a very close eye on in this tournament. Then uh, we move on to Connor Evans. Now Connor was named our first ever number one prospect all the way back in 2020. How time flies. I uh, was really looking forward to seeing him. We only got to see Bishops play a little bit against Poldrum in that uh, Western Province Rugby Day, but what a game it was. Um, and, you know, Connor played SA Schools in 2019, so it's another guy that, you know, I have seen quite a bit of, and that's why I'm so confident in naming the number one prospect, um, you know, in his matric year, first ever time we did that. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's not much left to say about him. Just keep a close eye on him because he's one of the best young talents uh, in South Africa and uh, played some f fantastic rugby for UCT as well. So yeah, let's uh, see how he gets on. Definitely going to be one of the players to watch at the tournament. And then we have uh, Mava Wolof here. And uh, Mava's uh, little shiner there should tell you everything you need to know about him. He's, uh, he's a real physical player. An absolute giant as well. Someone that I did sort of uh, predict that would be in the SA Under 20 reckoning this year. Um, purely because they just they, they need that steal, you know. And uh, I think Bafana made a great decision. Yes, selected Mava. Um, just to think about his journey, you know, from a journeyman sort of to speak at Brunvach, you know, where he wasn't getting that much, much exposure to Grey College, uh, to the junior Springboks. I think it's a hell of a time for him and his family. And uh, I think the whole community must be absolutely delighted to see that he's fulfilled his potential okay guys then we're going to be moving on to the hookers and uh, first up we have uh, Tion Langer now Tion is someone that oh, could we say Menlo Park are not a massive rugby school I think that would be fair to say um, I know that they are working on their program they've always had great junior results but Sometimes just that first team level just doesn't, uh, you know, just doesn't gel together, so to speak. But I've always enjoyed this guy's style of play. I remember, I remember when Menlo Park played Porus. I don't know if, I think they might have been at under 16 level, if I'm not mistaken. But I just remember him and Jordan Fenter going hell for leather with each other. That was so, that was so great to see, seriously. And I mean, it was, there, there wasn't anything ugly in it, you know what I mean? There, were, there was just like two big boys basically going at each other and not stopping. And, uh, you know, uh, Tion is, uh, is a proper hard man. Um, and, uh, you know, his form in the under 20 competition has just been extraordinary. I mean, he ended as the leading try scorer and off. Yeah, granted, he was part of a dominant pack. Still, um, you know, you, you've basically still got to put the work in, guys. You know what I mean? And uh, he's just put a lot of work in. And um, I think this is very much a selection on form rather than reputation. And um, I, I think that's fantastic. And I think he's going to take the opportunity with both hands. Absolutely. Then, one of my favorites... Good old Bupa Vokazela from the Connect Academy in Cape Town. They produced him. He's the son of uh, son of the Connect Academy. They're still feeding him and Lamla, who's obviously I'm going to mention later. And you can see, by the way, both of them have grown. Yeah, yes, I tell you that that must be quite a built uh, built of foot. But yeah, Bupa's uh, Bupa's someone again that's uh, you know shown a lot of talent from school level from his days at Rondebosch. Um, to have been selected Grand Como, he had Craven Week, he was selected for South African Schools A team, so always been highly rated. 
um, then signed on to Western Province where he was part of the team that reached all the way to the final, just missed out at the final hurdle to a rampant Bulls team. But Booker, Booker never stood back for anybody in terms of the physical game and he's deceptively quick, guys. Deceptively quick for a guy his size. Um, so yeah, I think him and Tion are going to work well off each other. Can't wait to see them play together. And I think the competition will definitely bring the best out of them. But yeah, it's so great to see a youngster from the Connect Academy uh, coming through the system. So yeah, that's your hookers. Uh, then we're going to be moving on finally to the props, the big boys. And first up, who do we just speak about? Lamla Nunu, you know, one of the Connect Academy boys. And again, imagine being the, what, you know, the, the, you know, the guys involved in Connect Academy and having to feed Lamla and Bupa, you know, during these uh, most important years of their life. I mean, these are some big boys, big appetites because they put in a lot of work at the gym, uh, put a lot of work into their fitness. So I've been told. So it's fantastic to see him being selected for the South African under 20 team. Now, if you think about where these guys came from, guys, I mean, they came from Kylie Cher. They went to the, uh, you know, to an open practice by run by the Connect Academy. And from there, the talent was nurtured. And it's just a South African success story. It's a beautiful South African success story to see him and Bupa in the South African under-20 team. It's uh, really, it, it pulls at the heartstrings, let's be honest. And I think there are going to be a lot more youngsters coming to the Connect Academy. I physically went there myself. Um, I saw some of the guys they have there. There's some very, very big boys over there, some very talented boys. And uh, there'll be a link in the description if you want to provide any support to them. Um, you know, whatever you can give, every bit helps. And uh, yeah, like it's uh, it's something just as South Africans that we're just going to try and get behind. You know, I don't know how many lives can be changed and uh, what, a, what a difference could be made for these guys because you know, one way out in terms of sport is obviously soccer. Now you take a look at Lamla and Bupa, they're not built for soccer. They, they are built for rugby. And there's a lot of kids out there like them that are built for rugby that just need the opportunities. So like I said, there'll be a link in the description. I'll pin a comment um, to their website. If you want to provide any help to the Connect Academy, that'd be fantastic. Anyway, on to the next one. We have another favorite of mine, Blocky's Lavanya. I really thought he was absolutely outstanding last year. Again, someone that you've always known that's had talent has always been on the radar. You know, I've got a, I've always got a list of a lot of players that I've been told to watch, keep an eye on, and Blockies was on that list from a very young age. But I could never have anticipated that he would have had the year that he had last year, the, the outstanding prop in the country last year, and. Uh, you know, some of the performances that he put in were just absolutely outstanding. Um, I think he must he must be on that pathway, that pathway to the top, guys. He's just an outstanding young player. Then we move on to an interesting player, an enigma, and that is Jean Als. And the funny thing with him is I'll never forget that uh, the first time I encountered him as a player, I was shown into a great college prop, and uh, I, I thought he was going to be the starter. And then he said to me, no, no, there's another guy starting, you know, I'm, I'm on the second team, I'm in the Cherries. So I said, well, who is this youngster? He said, no, his name's Jean Alsa, or Jean Alsa, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the surname properly. He said, uh, I said, well, who, who is this youngster, you know, he's like, no, no, he's a talented player, you should keep an eye on him. So I looked at him on Instagram, I said, how, how the heck is this Oka prop? He looks like a center, this doesn't make any sense. And then I saw him play and I'm like, I'm still, I'm, I'm still shocked. I mean, if you take a look at his build, you never think that he's a prop, but this guy can scrum, and, he, and he's effectively an extra loose forward as well because he's almost immovable in the breakdown, absolute nuisance in the breakdown. So I think he's going to be a fantastic impact player. I don't necessarily know if that, um, that he'll be a regular starter, but as an impact player, ooh, he's going to cause some absolute issues. And I think, I think the rugby world is going to be shocked when they see this guy run into the field and be like, how on earth is that a prop? And then they're going to see him scrum, and then they're going to see him at the breakdown, and they're going to shut their mouths just like I shut my mouth after just watching two or three of these games. Okay, so we'll move on to the next set. Um, some heavy hitters over here. Um, obviously, Seb Lombard. Now, Seb, you guys know, highly rated by us um, since he was first, uh, he first made the Paul Boys first team in 2019. Um, if you recall, that Paul Boys first team, they only had one grade 11 in the first team, and that was Seb. That just showed you how highly rated he is. 
and then in his matric year he just had that game against Monas and the Monas scrum was no joke but wow he had an absolutely barnstorming performance just absolutely dominated the scrum um, just he's taken that form with him to uh, you know since he's left school um, I think he has already made a curry cup appearance if I'm not mistaken but yeah heck of a talent guys an absolute ox in the scrum then we have um, Corne Valbach and uh, Old Porti is somebody we spoke about last year and we did mention him as one of the under 20 players to watch globally this year for obvious reasons I mean he was one of the outstanding South African front rowers um, last year and I mean let's be honest guys they were it, it wasn't a great year for us <laughs> for South African scrums last year but then again you know when you're taking on Georgia and Argentina that's their strong point but still um, and you could see that he was a bit shell-shocked at first. I, well, I don't want to use the word shell-shocked. Let's just say he was uh, easing into it. I mean, a, a, a guy like this doesn't get shell-shocked. Um, but let's just say he was easing into it, right? And uh, as he got into it, he started dominating his opposite numbers. And I think the return game against Argentina, it was just like a complete turnaround from him. He absolutely decimated his opposition. And I think he's going to be doing a lot of that um, in this upcoming series. Then finally, another big boy, um, someone I think is under 19, maybe he might be under 20, I'm not too sure, Sifu Mabeke, Hudson Park old boy. I almost got shot by the followers on Instagram when I said it's Maritzburg. I got, uh, got him conf confused with someone else. The Hudson, boy, boy, uh, Hudson Park boys were not happy with me at all. But yeah, um, there was a, there's a, an, an analyst who basically introduced me to him and sent me some video and I was just like, how, how does something that size move that quickly? I, I just don't get it. Um, very, very mobile player and um, very, very good carrier as well, guys. Um, I think someone that's definitely going to be one of those dark horses, so to speak, this year. Because I, I think, I mean, in all fairness, uh, you know, we, we know all about the Paul boys, uh, Paul Jim, great college, poor wrist boys. Um, but, you know, these guys from like the smaller rugby schools, we, we, we sort of uh, sometimes struggle to really follow their journey, so to speak. So I, I think in terms of being a household name to uh, the school rugby community at large, maybe not. Um, but believe me, after this tournament, you're going to know his name. And in the future, you're going to know his name. I, I, I really, I'm really, really think he's an underrated prospect. Like I said, definitely a dark horse, and uh, you know, someone to be, uh, you know, someone to be feared by the opposition. So let's see how he gets on. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Um, leave your comments down below and let us know what you think of this year's uh, crop. Uh, where do you think the selectors got it right and where do you think it, they got it wrong? And uh, what are your predictions? How do you think the various teams are going to perform? Um, have a great week further, as always. Cheers. Bye.